Here we have a question involving lines and planes. And we're given a line up here. Here mu is the parameter or the variable. And this line is, is sitting in three-dimensional space. And we're asked to show that this line lies on this particular plane and is parallel to this particular plane where this is a minus sign. Now the first part of this question is pretty straightforward. The second part takes a little bit of a little bit of uh, a little bit more thought, I guess. So when we talk about this boldface vector, we can just as associate a set of points with that vector. And in three-dimensional space, this vector here is like a position vector, I guess, and it has components or coordinates x, y, and z. So if I write this out with this uh, mu distributed into the uh, vector, I have this. So what it says is that this line, which is parallel to the vector 2, 1, 3, and passes through the origin, is basically x equals 2 mu, y equals 2 mu, and z equals 3 mu. Okay, so each of the components is a, fu is a function of one variable, mu. So for the first part of the problem, what you would do, is very easy, you don't have to visualise anything really, is just algebraically replace x with 2 mu, uh, y with mu, and z with 3 mu, and hopefully the equation balances. If it does, then, you, then you're finding the, uh, then you know that this line lies on this plane. Okay? Alright, so we substitute into 4x minus 5y minus z to see, and hopefully it gets 0. So we'll get um, 8 mu minus 5 mu minus 3 mu, and that's 0 for all mu. Hence, we would conclude that our line lies on the plane in question. Okay? Questions? It's a pretty easy, pretty easy uh, um, part, but the second part's more difficult. Who's done the second part? Okay, second part's more difficult. We want to show that this line is parallel to this plane. So this takes a little bit more muscle. What do we mean when we say a line is parallel to the plane? Well, you can kind of visualise it, but how do I check it? And how do I, um, how do I actually prove it? Well, that's a good question. Let me show you. Well, now, you may be able to do this a number of ways. What I'm going to do is transform this plane, or this, this Cartesian form, into a parametric form. Because if you have a parametric form, you know, two vectors that are parallel to the plane, and then you can compare them with a vector associated with the line. Okay? So, um, yeah. So, let's call this star. What I'm going to do to move to parametric vector form, I'm going to make introduce some parameters. Say uh, lambda 1, x equal lambda 1, and uh, say y equal lambda 2. Okay, there are two parameters because I'm trying to get a vector, par a parametric vector form. I need two parameters. Now, good question here, why did I choose those? No reason. The only way, re reason I chose those is because the coefficient of z is 1. So when I rearrange everything and make z the subject, I won't have to divide by any numbers. Okay, so I'm going to isolate the z, and we're going to get 3x minus 3y minus 2. Yeah? Okay, so in terms of lambda 1 and lambda 2, that's going to be 3 lambda 1 minus 3 lambda... To 2, minus 2. So I can write this as a vector now. Okay? If I just write it out in this sort of column form, put a lambda 1 there, a lambda 2 there, and a big mess down here, which I'm going to write in the following way. Alright, so I've got kind of a vector here, but it's not, strictly speaking, in the parametric vector form of 
uh, plane because what do I need? I need two vectors that are parallel to the plane and one point that lies on the plane. So if I break this up, let's look for the constants. There's zero constants there, zero constants there, and a negative two there. Let's look for the lambda ones. There's one lambda one there in the first component. There's zero lambda ones there, and there's three lambda ones there. So just sort of uh, sorry, just using scalar multiplication in reverse, I can come up with that. And let's look for the lambda twos. There's no lambda twos up there. There's one lambda two there, and there's negative three lambda twos down there. Whew, so that's our parametric vector form of the plane. Quite a bit of work to get that done, but we're in a good spot now because we have some geometry to help us. These two vectors are non-parallel. Okay, You can't make up one just by, by a scalar multiple of the other. Forget about the mu, or just take mu equals 1. That's a vector that's, par that's uh, parallel to the, to the line associated with this. Let's compare these two vectors. The question is, and this is the, the real key to the problem, is this vector in the span of these two vectors? Now, when you start using words like span, people go, huh? What is a span? A span of two vectors is just a plane that contains those, both those vectors. OK? And that goes through the origin. So, so a span must Yes. Yep, a plane doesn't have to, but a span must. Oh, yes, okay. that's, a good, that's a very, very good point. OK, so this is, this is the real critical point in this step. Can I describe this vector, forget about the mu, through a linear combination of these two vectors? Again, when you start using the word linear combination, people go, oh. Linear combination is just the following, OK? Let me break it down. Can I write or describe the vector parallel to this line okay now what do I mean linear combo it's just basically scalar multiplying the two vectors and then adding or subtracting them to get that. So have a look, right? How can you add or sub add, like multiply, not together, not the two vectors together, but just numbers with these vectors. How can you multiply this by a number and this by maybe a different number, add or subtract to get that? It's not so easy. Yep. And just. Right, so if I take 2 times this and add to that, I'll get that. Okay? 2 times this plus 1 times that is a linear combination of the two things, alright? 2, 1, 3 is 2 times this vector plus 1 times this vector. So what does that mean? It means that this, ve this, this vector 2, 1, 3 lies in the span, in the span of the two, the two vectors. It lies in the same plane that goes through the origin. Okay? So it has to be, if it lies in the same plane, it's got to be parallel to the plane. Right? Okay, let me just write that off. Okay, so hence, 2, 1, 3, the line, that's the vector that's parallel to this line, lies in the span of these two vectors and so the line must be parallel to the plane. 